we have to live with that. It's not about killing ourselves. So I'll quickly tell you what. I've got two options. Mm -hmm. Option one, an idealic situation, ideal situation, which an utopian situation will be that we have a cultural evolution in Nigeria like they had in China, and then we re-examine ourselves in terms of the culturally, historically, psychologically, our value system, that we have a radical departure and uh, there's a brutal crackdown on corruption. How like will that people would reform that's what take I was saying. Place, yeah. yeah, you see, you see How a lot, will it depends, take a lot depends on the government. But you see, if you look at the political process right now, and like I always say, we are not America, we will not be America in a million years. In a million years, no matter how we try, we will not be American. Nigeria may be dead and gone. Jesus Christ may have come back and scattered the world and all that. We may all be in paradise or hell, wherever. But the bottom line is we will not be America. Therefore, what business do we have running an American-type government? Yeah. We, will not, we will never be able to afford that. Why is it that we have senators or uh, reps members going there every day just to argue? And at times they go there and they're arguing things that don't have anything to do with the people they serve. Why, why can we not even do something very simple? Combine a bit of the British and the American system. The president can appoint his ministers, if he wants 40 of them or 45 of them, appoint them from the reps and the Senate. And then make sure that the rest of them, they meet only once or twice a month. That reduces the, the cost of governance at that level. We need, what we need right now is the government reform, but can the government reform itself? So. Not only the institution of government, but every other institution needs to reform themselves. That they must do. Time waits for no man, okay? If we don't do this, I see cataclysm coming up in future. You see, the, only, the, the bad thing is this, we may be dead and gone. If we keep on managing this way, there's going to come a generation in future that will say no more. But the point is that they will be actually hurting people who are even innocent. Most of the people who are stealing money today, I can assure you that their, their children are going to waste the money. It is only natural. By the time they are dead and gone, they have not imparted the right value in the children. Th those monies will be wasted. If it's not in the next generation, the generation after. And therefore, new people will come into money. And it may be those new people that come into money that will bear the brunt of the so-called revolution that will come. So yeah. a brutal crackdown like they're doing in China. They are corrupt, take them to the bar beach, shoot them off. But is that going to happen? I don't see it happening in this dispensation or in a political dispensation. It's going to be tough. But there's a more realistic approach, a gradual shift, OK? People are beginning to talk about it, like you said. I went to Lagos the other time, and I could hear on radio the way some of the people, the radio personalities are sounding. Someone was saying that, look, if I die and you bury me and you throw a party, I will wake up and come and hunt everybody, cremate me. That's radical thinking. People are thinking differently. Young people are thinking differently. So can we continue to accelerate this? Can government also live up to its responsibility? Can government have a more nuanced approach to corruption, not just the case of uh, uh, what we have now is lawyering. Okay, That's why you see a lot of the cases have been dismissed. So just as in the US, what we have now is not justice, but lawyering. If you can hire the best son or hire the best uh, uh, lawyer, you will probably get the kind of justice you want. So a more realistic approach would be a gradual shift, a proliferation of the space, of all our space with the right things to say. We have to proliferate the, state, the, the space. We have to let our children know that, look, this is nonsense. A woman who was on uh, this thing the other day, you know, w one of the women in the scam, uh, pension scam, and I saw a caption somewhere, someone said, mommy, uh, someone said, is a boy is asking his friend in school, so is your mommy really a thief? If your mommy a thief... And uh, sh she was covering her face. Exactly, so is, 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 is your mommy a thief or yeah. something like that? You know, we need to let our children know that this is the wrong way, not the right way. But of course, we often see, government must govern. That's one thing that must happen, which I'm not seeing. Government must govern in all the streets. When you go around, if the government sees a poster that drives people for, for quick wells and all that, this is my year of rulership and loyalty, this is my year of this, that's how we're killing our society. But the point is that government is, 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 is itself is scared. Government itself is afraid, I don't know, of, of, of too many things. And like they say, you know, when you're afraid, then you die before you're dead. So a gradual approach would be to, to reform, you know, and be patient about it. And perhaps Nigeria will also succeed in spite of itself. You look around now, I go to the airport, I see the changes that the Minister of Innovation is making. I say, well, in spite of all the money that they've stolen, See, Nigeria is managing to make progress. People like Fashola, they're doing a lot. People like uh, Akwabio has a lot of money every, every month. Every He's month. spending a lot. Uh, Amechi ahead is doing well. Someone mentioned Okorosha the other. You know, a few things. People mu see, I see that in spite of ourselves and our problems, we must make progress. So I think that the second approach is more realistic, okay, of taking it gradually, proliferating the space, having discussions like this, whether on your show or Mr. Rebel's show, anybody's show, you know, 
and the government must stamp its feet and let, let us know that it's ready to, to make progress. Otherwise, government itself, whether now or later, will be consumed by the corruption problem. If it's not consumed already. Well, you know. If it's not consumed guess, already. Your guess, your guess is as good yeah, as mine, right. you know. But uh, we, we, we must know that there's anger in the land. Mm -hmm. This may lead to a class war. And also, Nigeria has become a cannon fodder for international uh, dirty politics, like a lot of these problems that I see with Boko Haram and all those kind of things. You know, we, we don't need it. But the fact that once we open the chink, apart from the local problems we have, the truth is between me and you, no one is quite sure who is who's Boko Haram. You know, I was listening. Is there a bishop or Naikon, if I'm not mistaken, said corruption is even is is worse than Boko Haram. It, it is because <laughs> it, 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 it causes it causes things problems like Boko Haram mm. uh, and what have you. You know, but the point is that when you open up your system and you're not quite together in what you do, then all sorts of things will mount it. All sorts of problems will come on board, like the Boko Haram problem and, and all those kind of things. See, now we're living in fear. Okay, now we're living in fear. Uh, but the bottom, the bottom line is this, the government must govern. Government must govern. Governing means that taking control, taking charge of every sector of your, of your environment, ensuring that the right messages are being sent but across. But lastly, do you agree that corruption has actually led to more poverty in the land? Oh, certainly. And That's what it does. Okay. See, like I said before, mind you, the way, the way our society is structured now yeah. is that Nancy has a good job. And yes, you do have a good job. You know. they, they think you, you, maybe you earn dollars here. And so you have to send a lot of money to, to your relatives. Now, the point is that does it help them? Or would it be better if maybe we don't pay you as much as we pay you so that we can build the educational system and gradually ensure that, first of all, we take care of food and food security, which I always mention, so that we, by the time we have food and people can feed and there's less hunger in the land, people will be able to sit in class and have education. And therefore, we, just like in China, they have 600,000 600, engineers, engineers every year. Every so year, yeah. what about us? How many do we have? What are they doing? And this is where the opportunities are. I always mention one thing, last word, every time I'm traveling into this country, I see the rate at which the Chinese and the Indians are coming, are coming in. in. And in an equal measure, our best brains are trying are to go out. out. So what, there's a problem there. Whatever it is that they're getting here is what our people should actually be, be benefiting from. Thank you very much, Mr. Fashwa. You're welcome. A different perspective. Yes, Nigerians are not corrupt. Stupid, ignorant, confused, mental, but not corrupt. Okay. Thank you very much for being on the show today. I You're wish welcome. you a lovely day. I've been speaking with Thokbar Fashwa. We've been talking about war and corruption. Another perspective. Mr. Fashwa has, uh, I would say, broadened my mind this morning and given all of us foods for thoughts. All right, I'll see you all tomorrow. Do have a wonderful Wednesday. Bye now.